<laughs> okay, so my name is uh, Luis Mateos. I'm Portuguese. Um, I work at the European Commission on the European Institute for Democracy and Human Rights. Um, so basically what we do here there is uh, we finance projects from uh, different organizations, from civil society, universities. And one of the projects we finance is the, it's not really a project, but it's the Trust Fund, which is the project of, uh, that finances the EHE. And so good afternoon, my name is Jean-Charles de Corde. Uh, I'm uh, from Belgium. Uh, I work also in the European Commission, uh, Director General of AIDCO, where I'm basically uh, managing a number of uh, regional projects uh, in the eastern neighborhood countries, so the three South Caucasus, Belarus, Ukraine, and Moldova. And I'm also coordinating uh, basically our, uh, the thematic programs for that region. So, is it much better to be here than in uh, Minsk? Would you prefer to go back? Or, uh, uh, I mean, if, if in a perfect world, where would you be? Okay. Would, you, would you still stay in Vilnius? Or uh, would you prefer to go back and uh, let's say fight for your uh, country or something? OK, very well, good fun. Well, I, mean, I, think that, I, I think that even being not in Belarus, our students, uh, both full-time and double-time, or uh, low resident students, they uh, work for Belarus, they work on Belarus, and mm, it's, not, it's not so even important to be in Belarus as a country, because usually, you know, uh, the education that our students, uh, they get here in EU, or after EU, you know, getting them made in some Western countries or in the States, so they are the only specialist in this sphere. If Belarus is a close country to no student mobility programs, no possibility to participate in any you know, staff conferences outside Belarus <coughs> to manage the uh, uh, topic. So the only way out is you know, to be outside. But anyway, you know, they started Belarus and I think it's important. Why did you issue and how, how did you arrive here? The first was exactly the university, the university itself, the, the program it provided. Because in Belarus there is no program on cultural heritage. We study on the tourism from the point of eco uh, economic uh, questions. But we do not deal with uh, the problems of cultural heritage. And in our country, it is a very big problem that, is, uh, that we must think about. Another thing that was uh, very, really affected my coming to the university was the ability and the possibility to test myself, to t test myself as a person. How will I live? How will I survive in absolutely another country? And I think this experience is also very, very precious because it made me uh, it just, I, I had to grow up quickly in a year to become a person, to become a grown up person, to uh, care about myself, to care about my living, earning money, and uh, getting like uh, a piece of bread. Um, so I choose this university because of academic freedom, I think. Because uh, in our country, uh, designers, um, I teach by um, more maybe solid old system and uh, there we have more academic freedom and have some opportunity to take uh, part in some cultures, uh, cultural events. We have foreign, uh, foreigners as teachers and uh, more um, rich uh, visual um, materials. And that's why I think for designers is uh, it is the better choice, the best choice. The EHU also participates in the Erasmus movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you also receive students from, yes. from abroad and you also have the opportunity to go somewhere in Europe. Mm -hmm. I think that if I get my, my education will be like more completed and yeah. make it better. And uh, that's also a good thing that the EHU provides me. Yeah. Yeah. Most of our students, you know, after getting the AIDS issues a year, in Western countries such as well, to EU or, or, or to the United States you know, to get the MA and then so we have this full uh, up-to-date flexible education they are the only Belarusians with such type of education they go back to Belarus they are well, the only in some spheres like design of visual culture mm -hmm. modern arts and stuff like that you know, nine of our VA programs and uh, seven in MA uh, you you can't find any uh, example of such programs in Belarus. In Belarus, there are 54, uh, 54 universities, and no one of them has such programs as, uh, as we do. 
So you see, you know, we uh, uh, one, one, one thousand nine hundred of un, uh, of the most unique uh, students, in, the most unique Berlinians, I think. Sometimes for students to study somewhere else in Europe, uh, it's uh, also a financial question because uh, we are non-European uh, non students and we have to apply for scholarships. That is uh, very little, like number of scholarships for non-European students. Maybe that's why it could be uh, one of the reasons why students choosing tr trying to apply there and not not studying in Europe and uh, why they choosing to study here. So if Bologna process offers us mobility and the only Belarusian studying in universities is involved in the Bologna Bologna process is EHU, so why not to try to participate in it? Either through Erasmus programs or Campus Europe and North Plus or uh, getting a bit amazed by what I'm sure it's a financial question. I should say that great efforts actually are paid for promoting student science. Our main goal is to include students in academic discourse mm -hmm. by clarifying or defining the activity in science practice. Uh, so students get an opportunity to make some scientific research, to launch round table or seminar or any of this kind on specific theme, or organize an intellectual club and get some grant for this. If there is in the bus, so that for sure there are students, and students they need their own self government because we have ranks and we have, and according to uh, law on higher education, they, we have uh, places in Senate, in rectorate, in, in uh, inst institution of university, we, everywhere we have places, for example, I'm a member of the Senate, you know, and Timothy as well, so we have places in uh, Science Council, for example, so Sasha, she is actually one member of uh, uh, Science Council, etc, etc, etc. Because you know, you always need to provide the vision of students. Sure, you know, we're so creative and smart university, but anyway, sometimes there are well, let's say not conflict, but some uh, very you know uh, not so easy situations when you need you know to sit and uh, to think about how to, what to do in the future. Yeah, I was very impressed the first time I came here, and I'm glad that basically my first impression uh, is shared now by my colleague Luis, and, and and definitely when coming back here. Uh, still have also the, the feeling that this is really uh, an initiative uh, which makes a lot of sense, uh, which brings a lot of added value for uh, young Belarusian students uh, when going back to Belarus and bring some change uh, in Belarus. How do you see the future of the future? Do you see the I think I think EHU, I mean, uh, makes sense, as my colleague was saying, the EHU should uh, make sense to support this guy. I mean, the relationship between you and EHU are uh, stable because uh, when we finance them uh, every year, uh, it's a fixed contribution to the trust fund. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Now we're going Thanks to, to you. It was a pleasure.